I'm Lane, I'm a senior, and I'm on the Echo crew. And I'm Maddie, and I'm the girlfriend. Hi, I'm Gordon, I'm a senior here at Warren Wilson and work on the college farm. My name is Will Leverett, and I coach the Whitewater Paddling Team. I'm Laura Vance, I teach gender women studies and sociology. I'm Jay Casale. Um, he has Jay Bear also. My name is Beth. I am on the Rise crew. I'm today. I work on the Writing Center crew and I'm a junior. My name is Brooke Millsaps and I am Director of Service Dining. I'm Jasmine. I work on Building Services too. Because we I came out when I was really young. Uh, 14, right into high school, I knew I was at least bi-curious, I was dating another bi-curious girl, and um, so I knew from er from pretty early on that I was, that I was gay, uh, that I was queer, um, and I told, told my folks, told everyone, started a GSA. Maddie and I met working at summer camp together, and um, <laughs> it was basically love at first sight, I think. <laughs> Dramatic. Anyway, um, and we didn't. We were together, and we didn't tell anyone about it for like a month because we didn't think that our friends and coworkers would be accepting about it. Um, but then we told people, um, and it was a non-event. It was fine, and we realized that if we were okay with being together, regardless of who the other one was or what sex they were, or whatever, um, then the people in our lives that cared about us would be okay with that too. I first came out when I was 13. I was the first person in my high school to come out, and I had a lot of animosity directed at me because of it. I felt very alone because I didn't have anyone else at my school who was out, or anyone I really felt I could talk to about it. When I was 15, though, we, start, we founded a Gay-Straight Alliance at the school. And through that, I was able to start working in the younger grades, teaching about diversity, teaching about homophobia, and trying to create a safer community. Um, I was raised by a gay mom, and it gave me a really big support group in the LGBT community. And it helped me just learn to accept people as they are, be it straight, gay, whatever and just love people as people. Um, I came from a background where it made it seem like it was religiously not okay to be gay or um, bisexual or anything of that nature. And I kind of spent my whole childhood thinking that people who were gay were not accepted and I shouldn't be friends with them. Um, and then I met a lot of people in high school who were gay and I you know, realized that these are really cool people and there's no reason why I shouldn't be friends with them because they aren't that different from me. And so I started to reject those beliefs and form my own opinions based on these people and their personalities and not how they identified. Um, also I got bullied a lot because people made assumptions about my sexuality and I, that hurt because I mean I wasn't even out and people were already assuming things about me. So when I finally did come out here at Wilson, I was really glad that there was like a warm, a warm environment um, that I felt safe in and people were very comforting and supportive of my decision. Um, and I just try to portray that in my everyday interactions with people to like, you know, take that sense of comfort that I felt and give it to other people um, when they choose to confide in me or whatever, just because I feel like it should always be okay to be yourself. In my life outside of Warren Wilson, I also try to engage in conversations with people who are maybe less supportive um, in order to help broaden their thinking and um, maybe maybe bring them on as, as a supportive member of our community. Well, my sister came out as a lesbian uh, about 25 years ago and, and I remember when it happened at the time I really had to sit down and examine my own feelings and my own reaction and response to that. And, and right away, I kind of determined that um, if I had a problem with that, that it was very akin to racial prejudice. I mean, what's the difference? And, and I just, I, I, you know, I knew I wasn't going to have any part of that. I came out as being gay in high school, and it was hard for me for a time. And coming to Warren Wilson, I figured myself out and am now sort of a leader on the, the farm crew and at the college in general. And 
am happy to be able to make this a safe space for both people who are uh, out of the closet and folks who are still in the closet. Hi, I'm Paula Garrett. I'm Vice President for Academic Affairs and Dean of the College at Warren Wilson. And I'm, I'm gay. It hasn't always been that easy for me to say that. When I was growing up, it wasn't something you talked about. In fact, when I went to college, it was something that you hid. The guy I was dating at the time was um, thought that some other guy was hitting on him and went to the dean of our college and reported him, and that guy get, got kicked out. One of my friends was found in bed with another woman, and she got kicked out. So it was something I grew up thinking that you didn't talk about, you certainly hid, it was something you were ashamed of. So there was no idea that you might be honest about who you are. Fast forward 15, 20, maybe more like 25 years, and here I am, the dean of the college at Warren Wilson. It's not that it was easy for me to decide to, decide to come out and to be honest about who I am, but it was the single best decision that I made. To be honest, to let my partner and my son come to work with me and be around and be a part of this community has been so empowering for me and so honest. It's let me live in, with a sense of integrity and a sense of authenticity. And so trying to live that life, showing students, showing the campus community whether they have an issue with homosexuality or not, at least that I'm being honest and that I'm living with authenticity is the way that I'm trying to make things better. Because of our actions in the Gay-Straight Alliance, we had some backlash at the school. And one night, some students broke into the school and vandalized it. When I arrived in the morning, some teachers pulled me aside and they told me that the students had written in huge letters, Queers are us. And underneath it they had written, What are you going to do, Tony? Cry about it? Tony was our principal and he was well known for crying when things were either really good or really bad. I wanted to address it and the teachers weren't completely sure how we should do that, but I had them call a gathering that day and the Gay Straight Alliance got up and we spoke about how it had made us feel and how we had felt attacked by it. But that wasn't quite enough. So that afternoon when I was in spoken word, I got to talking with my spoken word teacher and we decided to go to Home Depot and buy a bunch of spray paint. The next morning we got up on the roof where they had spray painted the original slogan and over it we spray painted we are us in huge rainbow letters they were around six feet tall and all around it we had students from every community in the school come up and write different ways that they identified around this slogan just to kind of identify that we are all different and we all have a place in this community and we all deserve to feel safe no matter what our identity is and we called news there so that there was a lot of attention to what had happened and made sure that this just wasn't kept quiet as it could have been. And it kind of made us feel safer. It gave us a community and it showed us that there are really a lot of people at the school who care about us and who care about our identities and everyone has a place at my school. I try to make the world a better place in my everyday life by being involved in micro-level interactions in an attempt to create social change and also by trying to be involved in larger campaigns for social change. Um, one thing that my partner and I do is that we just are always out in whatever community that we live in. And that's not very difficult in Nashville, but in rural Georgia it was more of a challenge. Um, we also try to provide support for um, LGBTQ students on campuses and in communities where we live. I'm Julie Wilson, I'm coordinator of our writing center, and it's come to my attention recently that there's an inequity between our staff and faculty in marriages and our staff and faculty in domestic partnerships, and that is that both can get health care coverage for their spouses or partners, but the health care coverage of someone in a domestic partnership is taxed by the federal government whereas someone who's married doesn't face this tax burden. And of course, as we know, same-sex marriage is illegal in North Carolina, so the only option for someone in a same-sex relationship is a domestic partnership. So this person ends up paying about $1,000 a year more than someone who can be legally married to cover the taxes on the health care benefit. So the way I want to make it better at Warren Wilson is to work with our college to figure out how we can make this situation more equitable for our employees. Looking at the model of Bowdoin College, which has provided an equity stipend to employees in same-sex domestic partnerships to cover the tax burden. Bowdoin College has done this, Yale University, Google provides this benefits to same-sex employees. And I want to work with folks at Warren Wilson to do the same thing. 
This summer, I worked for the Texas Crochet Alliance Network at a youth activist camp, and it was just a beautiful gathering of people from all walks of life, high school students, and we trained them to lead GSA or QSA or diversity clubs in their own schools, um, because we feel that you shouldn't have to wait around until you get older for things to get better. We feel, I feel, that um, more pressure should be put on school administrators government, teachers, and other students to make it better, for everyone to feel accepted, and for everyone to feel loved. And people shouldn't have to wait half of their lives to feel good about themselves. People should be empowered. And I think that, that many members of the um, LGBTQ community are probably in the same boat, in that you know if they were given some encouragement and positive reinforcement, that, that they would prosper and do well. Um, I think that's one of the great things about this community, Warren Wilson, is that we are, for the most part, very accepting of that community, and, and I think it's a very good thing. When my partner and I lived in Oregon, we were involved in a series of campaigns in an attempt to defeat initiatives that would have restricted rights for LGBTQ people in our community in the state of Oregon. Um, so what we did is we went out into the community and talked to people about our lives and the ways in which the initiatives would have affected us. That was really good, not only in terms of defeating those initiatives, but also in terms of creating community ties that were then really useful when an additional initiatives were put before voters in Oregon. Um, we always try to not only get involved in the communities in which we live and create ties with people to work for social justice, but we also um, try to be informed about issues and vote in a way that not only helps to make sure that our legislators represent our interests, but also the judges in the communities in which we live and the judges in the states in which, in which we live um, make decisions that reflect not only our interests, but really uh, work to create a more equal society. Unfortunately, not too long afterwards, the same group of students broke in again, this time going a little bit further. They smashed a bunch of windows and they tagged on the walls things like silly faggots, dicks are for chicks, and they spray painted a huge picture of a woman with knives in her with words like bitch and dyke. It hurt a lot to have our identities attacked again and to have my personal identity attacked again. But we then had the slogan that they didn't touch because their identities were part of that slogan and they didn't want to ruin that. And while I also had my car vandalized around that same time, it still felt safer. We still had this thing that we could all stand under. And that slogan was visible from the highway about two miles away. Everyone could see that we were a community which welcomed everyone, no matter what their identity was. At the time, everyone thought I was making my life harder. Why are you, why, you know, why make this harder? If you make this choice now, your life's just gonna be harder. But I knew then, and I know now, that my life has gotten so much better because it's like in the Matrix or Alice in Wonderland. And forgive this analogy, but like, you know, take the blue pill, you go down the rabbit hole. All of a sudden there's a whole nother world out there where there are people who are like you, there are other gay or lesbian or bisexual or transgender, queer, SM loving, whatever, or anything, you know, there's a whole world out there and you just have to put yourself out and part of that is being honest and that's been my journey to getting it to be better for me. We are your friend. You never be and this is how I'm trying to make it better. And that's how I make things better. And that's what I do to try and make it better. That's how I make it better. That's how I try to make it better. That's how I try to make it better. That's how you make it better. We made it better for ourselves. And that's how I make it better.